a lot of channels, they're going on hope and wishful thinking somehow as if they're invested in this car, they already have it. So this car will have 40 horsepower, 29 foot-pounds of torque. I am sticking to it and watch me be right. Welcome to Rip Roaring Garage, I'm Alex, and if you're here, you're gonna have a rip roaring time. So everybody by now has probably seen the Dodge teaser videos about the upcoming seventh last call special edition car. Now all the big channels have thrown their hat into the ring to predict what those little teaser numbers, Easter eggs, well, what they mean. And I'm gonna tell you right now, they're wrong. They are very wrong. Now I'm gonna put my skills, or we're talking my math skills, because the reality is a lot of these channels are going based on wishful thinking. When you get fixated on something, that's what you're eventually going to see. Honestly, I'm not like hyped or excited or whatever because, well, that car is not meant for you or me or us normal people. It's going to be for the rich collectors and you'll never see See this at a car show. Still, I like a good puzzle and I won't turn down the opportunity to make one of those big channels look bad. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with the first one. Run and hide. Ah, uh, you see the little leprechaun? He gets the IV and all that and he turns into Buffy McBufferson. Obviously, the big thing is E85. This has been on the rumor mill for quite some time. I'm not going to dwell too much about the first video other than maybe mentioning the play on words of run and hide, Jekyll and Hyde and whatnot. Now the second video, a little more subtle and this is I guess the beginning of where a lot of channels and we're talking Knockout 360, Racer X, Butter the Great, they started getting things a little messed up. Let's watch the video real quick and see what we're dealing with. So it starts off with that scale, and you see Mini McLeprechaun and Maxi McLeprechaun, and the scale moves over to 7.1 pounds. Now, a lot of people pointed out about the strut towers and whatnot, that somehow this is gonna be related to suspension, possibly, but the biggest mistake was the boost. The boost assumption that 7.1 somehow was boost. The problem is this, I used to teach math, and one of the things is, if you solve the problem without using one of the given pieces of data, <laughs> you were wrong. You made a mistake. Problems, puzzles, they give you information, so you use it. What is this um, piece of info that everybody missed or ignored? The title of the video. The video was called Density Matters. Density Matters. What's 7.1 pounds? It is the density of the E85 blend that they're using. Now this is one of the things that I remember from when I worked on aircraft. Uh, obviously density is very important when you're fueling an airplane. When you're putting fuel on, you're typically gonna put it on in gallons, but you need to know the weight. Therefore, your density, well, it matters. Ethanol is heavier than gasoline. Pour ethanol into gasoline, the ethanol will eventually sink to the bottom, which is what's happening right here. Now, until I know the exact blend and the exact formulation of ethanol that they're, that they're using, I am 99.99% sure that is what they're talking about. No questions, no doubts. Does it even make sense to say that 7.1 pounds of boost on top of the current Hellcats, uh, super stocks, jailbreaks, and so on. I don't think that's the way an engineering mind works. You want to put the concrete spec, the concrete whatever, not. This is going to be the boost. If you divide it by eight, add one. And if you take the day it was released on plus three. One eternity later. Nobody's going to figure that out. It has to be something that's solvable. Now the next video is called Scream at 215 miles per hour. But before we get into the hints of the title, let's look at the video. We got an anemometer. It's a device to measure wind speed. You got a little leprechaun boy with the... He needs a breath mint. On the display of that anemometer, there's some info. To call that an equation is like saying that a toy car is 
a means of transportation. That doesn't take away from the information they're giving us. So we have 105 at, in parentheses, 3.02 by 2.98 equals 1582. Remember in school, when you were doing a problem, sloshing away at that problem, and eventually you get to an answer, and you think, eh, okay. But then you try it again, and you have that like, oh my god, it's I, how did I miss it? It's so simple. Well, that's the situation we got right now. Everybody's talking about 1582 being the CFM as far as the intake. I'm here to tell you that no, it's not. It doesn't even add up. Starting off from the fact that this is a scream at 250 miles an hour. The 250 miles an hour in itself is its own piece of info. It kind of makes me think that the car will not be a super stock or a demon type car it will be a top speed car versus an acceleration car you got the 105 that's your octane rating for the ethanol funny enough that the 250 mile an hour thing made me think that the whole 1582 was downforce that we were looking at a acr challenger type car let's cut to the chase this is intake <sighs> what is that that's exhaust, baby. To me, 302 is not the blower size, neither is 2.98. That's gonna be your exhaust. Outer diameter, inner diameter. And that's important because we're gonna use a couple of equations I'm gonna show you right here. Some of these are common equations that are used. Typically, you take your exhaust flow rate and you divide it by 2.2, and that gives you a rough estimate for your horsepower. In order to get the CFM rate, you take the surface area of the cross section of your exhaust, or at least the smallest uh, constricting area of your exhaust, and you multiply that by 115. Let's start off with the Demon, because chances are it will have similar exhaust, if not the same exhaust. We're talking three inch pipes. Now, three inch is the nominal. In reality, it is actually 3.02. So if you have a 3.02 inch exhaust and in diameter of 2.98 that leaves you with a 0.40 wall thickness for your exhaust not relevant but that does match up with what's currently on the cars so it's always nice to kind of check off things to make sure you're on the right track to calculate the surface area of the cross section you take that uh 2.98 you got to get the radius, so you divide that. So the radius of your exhaust is going to be 1.49 inches. Plug that into pi r squared. And we're going to get 6.979 square inches. We'll plug that into the CFM flow rate equation. So you just multiply that by 115. And that gives us 805 CFM. Well, we're awfully shy of um, the number we're trying to pair up. We got to remember, dual exhaust. So multiply that by two. So we're going to get 1610. Bear with me for a second. So everybody knows, maybe everybody doesn't know, but ethanol is not the more efficient fuel that it's claim to be. What it does have is a higher octane rating for cheaper. Crown Vicks, for example, they run ethanol, including my Grand Marquis, and it has actually less uh, performance, worse fuel mileage. And the reason for that is for the same amount of calories to be generated, the equivalency is between 25 and 35 percent more in volume of ethanol. Your injectors, if they're not specially modified and the computer doesn't have that capacity, you're going to be restricted to a lower power and worse uh, mileage, worse efficiency. But it does burn better. So the CFM for a Demon is going to be around 1610. 1610, 1582, that's really close within the margin of error for the calculations we're making. So that lets me know we're on the right track. But you know what's more important? None of these numbers mean anything, or at least they're not the Easter egg Dodge is giving us. These are just the breadcrumbs for us to calculate the car's horsepower. Plug in the 1582 into the calculation for horsepower. In other words, you divide it by 2.2 and you'll get 731, give or take. So let's just say 730 horsepower. That's regular Hellcat uh, power, right? Well, we shouldn't forget that we added 25 to 35% extra flow. So that equation of 2.2 is not quite accurate unless you factor in that 25 to 35 percent. And when you do that, you get 940 horsepower to 950 horsepower, give or take. And what the real kicker is, when I did my episode a while back about the stage kits and pointed out how stage one 
for the red eyes, super stocks and whatnot, bring them up to a demon level. In other words, they're the ECU for race gas and that's about it. Stage two brings them up to 885 horsepower and stage three, my bet is going to be 940, 950 horsepower for all red eye, super stock, uh, this car and so on. Why? Because somebody like me, if I have the opportunity to make my car as powerful as that, I'll spend the money. But if that car is going to be the top of the line, like I told you before, automotive elitism, and I have no shot to get this car through direct connection to get it at that level, why even bother with the stage kit? No point. I might as well go big or go home and just go full mods. So Dodge wants to make money. Therefore, I think that's going to be the great equalizer amongst all these different models. But the big takeaway is still the fact that I've just calculated the car's power. It's going to be 940 horsepower. It's been teased before. This car will not be able to break 1000 horsepower. But before we move on to the fourth and final teaser video by Dodge, if you like this video, subscribe, give me a like, share this video around. This is not just a car channel. This is not just a Mopar channel. We are a community and I have big plans. We're going to do a yearly car show, including with the giant projector where members can show their cars off and we get to know each other because I'm talking to you guys, right? You guys know I'm developing some really uh, awesome friendships. New guys, we, we got to make them feel more welcome and just talk like it's at a car show. Mingle, mingle people, mingle. We have to make it different than every other car channel out there. And nobody can try to take this away from us because we got that passion, we got that fire and we got what it takes. Hmm. A lot of this stuff will take money. I do have a subscribe star page. It is like Patreon, but doesn't take as much money. I'm new to all this uh, e-begging. My ego doesn't like it. We got to get this thing going moving forward. All right. I wish I could afford to, to fund all this stuff, but running a car show, I've done that before. And it takes, it takes a lot of effort, not just money, but a lot of effort. Ideally, I'd love to give away a car, you know, especially a young kid and obviously not something like you know super expensive but something all right so i know you guys are passionate i know you guys care so let's get this rolling all right all right let's get to the next video okay so we got a guy that's busting our balls here and he's got the jackhammer oh look little pistons and 25 38 psi now this video they call this hemi vice oh, that's a vice i partake in hand me a like uh, the big balls are ethanol i don't know why balls maybe somebody thinks that in chemistry all things are balls c2h5oh i have a feeling they're trying to play do the play on words of hemi is breaking the vice of gasoline it's you know like it's an addiction or something everybody's assuming that jackhammer looks like an injector and sure it, it does not 2538 is awfully high for ported injection right so people are thinking it's going to be direct injection blah 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 no it ain't going to be direct injection it doesn't make sense for a short run, reinvent the wheel. What could 2538 be? This one was the toughest one, honestly. There's very little information and the visuals are very vague. You can say maybe it looks like an injector, but that part there, that's the part I'm talking about. Look at the positioning of it. That's the head or the valve cover to a head. Well, what pressure would be in a head? Combustion chamber, maybe? Yeah, on a Dodge Demon, maximum combustion chamber pressure is around 2000 PSI. More precisely, 1958. Considering that we're adding material, more material inside the same combustion chamber size, 6.2 liter, will result in a higher pressure. So knowing that the Demon has, let's say for approximation, 2000 PSI, and this is giving us the pressure for the seventh last call uh, special edition okay cool whoop de do right well there's another formula we can use and this is a little complicated i need both my hands for this okay because i'm going to put stuff here like in class imagine this duct tape well speed tape is a piston we know the bore 
which is another way of saying diameter, 4.090 inches coupled with the amount of pressure on it can give us a linear force. Calculating the surface area is the next step. Pi r squared. And the mistake that it's really easy to make sometimes is that you forget that the bore is the diameter. So you've got to divide that by two. 4.090 divided by two is 2.045. Square that gives you 4.182 multiply that by pi you can just use 3.14 you don't have to go all nuts with the decimals and that gives you 13.138 square inches for a demon or hellcat piston so 25 38 pounds per square inch means just pounds over inches square so we're going to multiply that 25 38 multiplied by 13.138 square inches to give us 33,345 pounds. That is a lot of force pushing on that piston rod, on that crank. Cool info, again, who cares? These are breadcrumbs. Going by demon numbers, we know the maximum cylinder pressure of a demon, it's the 1958. So we're gonna do the same calculations. Luckily, we have the same piston size. With that, we get 25,725 pounds. We know the torque on a demon 717 foot pounds 25,725 is equivalent to 717 what is equivalent to 33,345 x will equal 33,345 times 717 divided by 27,275 and i made a mistake 25,725 we get drum roll please 929 foot pounds of torque on the 85 so this car will have 940 horsepower 929 foot pounds of torque I am sticking to it and watch me be right. If I'm wrong, you could throw tomatoes and rotten eggs at me. What can I say? But I am very confident these are the numbers because nothing else really makes sense. And nothing else takes into account the totality of information that was given to us. A lot of channels, they're going on hope and wishful thinking somehow as if they're invested in this car. They already have it. Like I said, none of us will get it. We'll be lucky. Well, we are lucky, and I know I'm grateful, to have a beast like this. And sure, stage kits will be coming, uh, modifications, maybe, possibly. But one thing's for sure, I am not playing this consumerism rat race. Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. I actually did this because I like puzzles. If it gets our channel to a wider audience, great. We need all the help we can get. Times are tough. As I'm recording this, a lot of the banking stuff kind of happened yesterday, but today some of the banks rose back up, although SVB is... <whistles> In fact, the video that was supposed to be for today was about Haggerty. They are, I think, bones because they had a lot of money in SVB. So yesterday they lost over 8%. Today, another 8% as of recording. Go woke, go broke. I know this was probably boring but i enjoy it and i know i'm gonna enjoy the comments and you know talking to you guys i really appreciate it it's been a rough uh, week for me so i was in the pits but thanks to a lot of you guys man i just feel motivated again that being said if you really can i know times are gonna be tough if you want to chip in i would really appreciate that we would appreciate this dj food music for our car show for the future We're getting the t-shirts ready do we need to have rip roaring garage t-shirts plus there's three more versions coming out and they're all cool they cover all our bases so thanks to everybody thanks to you for making rip roaring garage great especially now when we're in the winter years of the Challenger and the Charger. Nowhere that really kind of expresses that stunab, you know, that kind of feeling. This car is the automotive equivalent of that feeling. Oh, you got, there's a faster car. Don't care. Oh, there's a car more efficient. Don't care. There's a car that's blah, blah, blah. Don't care. Because this is what I'm driving. And I know you guys love your cars and don't give a rat's patootie about what anybody else thinks. So I'm Alex, this is Rip Roaring Garage, where oil is thicker than blood. Hand me a like and have a rip roaring weekend. Yeah. And our little boy here is having a bad breath day. I used to teach the math.
the, the math. This is the automotive equivalent. This car is the automotive What, 7.1 pounds? The destiny, the destiny. <laughs> I'm freezing so much, you know, going into hypothermic euphoria.